hello guys you welcome to my channel today we are going to be talking about a topic in mathematics but before we introduce the topic let's quickly look at this concept if i have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 and i have minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 now this is same thing as 8 why this is minus 8 the shortcut of writing 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is the same thing as saying 2 times 4 and that of minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 same thing as saying minus 2 times 4 of which this will give us minus 8 and this will give us 8 you can see that it's the same thing this one consume less space this one also consume less space hence the shortcut of writing the addition of the same number or the subtraction of the same number is what we call multiplication now what if we now have the multiple of the same number like this you know this will give us 16 and this consume a lot of space I can write this as 2 to power of 4 this format is called index form or I call it exponential form this is base and this is called power or you call it index or exponent so the shortcut of writing the multiple of the same number is what is what we call exponential or what we call index if i now have more than one index now this is three index form now this should be called indices when you have more than one index it is called indices and that is what we have to look at in today's class when you talk about indices we have just explained what is indices now how can we solve questions on indices successfully all you need to know is to understand the law of indices Let's quickly discuss the law of indices. If I have 3 to power of 3 times 3 to power of 2, this is the same thing as saying 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. If I remove the brackets, I will have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And this should give me 3 to the power of 5. But if you observe the power, which is 3 and 2, if I had this together, won't I have this? Yes, I will. So, I can say 3 plus 2 is 3 to the power of 5. Now, let's see. If this should be the same thing for what another number let's say I have 2 to power of 4 times 2 to power of 3 for instance you know this should become 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and this will become 2 times 2 times 2 which in turns 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and this will give us 2 to the power of 7 
If you also look at the power, if I had 3 and 4 together, 3 and 4, if I had them together, I will also have 7. Hence, I can conclude that if I have a to power of m times a to power of n, my result is a to power of m plus n. And this would be the first law of indices. Please class, kindly watch this video till end. So, let's look at another case where we have 3 to power of 5 divided by 3 to power of 2. This is the same thing as saying 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 divided by 3 times 3. You know, this and this will take care of themselves and I will have 3 to power of 3. If you observe the two power, you will see that if I say 5 minus 2, my result will be what? 3. Therefore, I can pick one of these and subtract the two power. Now, let's see if this would be the same case as another example. If I have 2 to power of 4 divided by 2 to power of 2, I'll be having 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 2 times 2. And this and this can take care of each other. I'll be left with 2 square. If you observe the 2 power here, if I subtract 4 and 2, I'm going to have 2. Therefore, I can pick one of the power also and subtract, uh, one of the base rather, and subtract the 2 power. Hence, I can have 2 to power of 4 divided by 2 to power of 2 to equal 2 to power of 4 minus 2 which is 2 to power of 2 so I can say if I have a to power of m divided by a to power of n my result is a to power of m minus n and this will be the second law of indices I believe we are getting this. If you are really getting this, kindly click on the like thumb and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to share with your friends. Now, let's look at a case whereby I have 4 to power of 1 divided by 4 to power of 1. This is simply 4 divided by 4, which is 1. If you agree with me that whatever I solve with this method, this particular generalization of second law can solve it as well. And the answer will be the same. So, if that should be the case, I can say 4 to power of 1 divided by 4 to power of 1 is the same thing as saying 4 to power of 1 minus 1 equal 4 to power of 0. But I don't know the value for 4 to power of 0. But I know the value to this will equivalent to this. So since this one is equal to 1, it means 4 to power of 0 is also 1. If we try this with another number, like 2 divided by 2, this will give me 2 equal 1. If I apply the law, I will have 1 minus 1, that's 2 to 0. It shows this will also equals to this. Hence, we can generalize that. If a raised to power of 0, our result is 1, provided a itself is not equal to zero please note that condition if one million raised to power of zero 
the result will be 1. If you yourself raise to power of 0, your result will be 1, provided that you are not 0. That's to tell you that a to the power of 0, a, that is 0 to the power of 0, is not 1. Kindly note that. This will be the third law. Let's quickly move to the fourth law. If I have 3x all to the power of 2, this simply means that 3x multiply another 3x. And this will give us 3 square and x square. Hence, it shows that these two distribute over 3 and x. This will give us 9x squared. Then we can generalize by saying, if I have a and b that raised to power of n, my result is a to power of n and b to power of n. So, this is the fourth law. So, so let's look at the next law now. The next law is kind of similar to this one. If I have If I have 3 to power of x all square, then all to the power of 3. This is the same thing as saying 3 to power of x all square, 3 to power of x all square, 3 to power of x all square. And you know this should become 3 square x square, 3 square x square, 3 square x square. This is multiplication between them. Hence, 2 plus 2 plus 2, 2 plus 2 plus 2, that will give us 6. 2 plus 2 plus 2, that will also give us 6. Hence, it's more or less like saying 2 times 3 that give us what? 6. Because this can be written as 3x all to what? 6. I can then generalize that. If I have AB that raised to power of n or raised to power m, my result is AB or raised to power nm. This would be the fifth law. Kindly master all these laws. This will make indices question more easier for you to solve. Now, Let's look at a case whereby I'm given 2 to power of 2 divided by 2 to power of 4. This is the same thing as saying 2 times 2 divided by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. This we take care of this and we then have 1 all over 2 square. Now, let us apply the second law to this question. 2 to 2 divided by 2 to 4 will give me 2 to 2 minus 4, and this is 2 to minus 4. Now, since the result, minus 2, sorry, this will become 
2 to minus 2. Since the result that this give you will be the same thing as the result that this particular law will give you, this will become 1 all over 2 to power of 2. Hence, we can generalize by saying a to the power of negative n, our result is 1 divided by a to the power of n. This remark another law for this class, and we're going to call it the sixth law. Now, let's look at a fractional power. If I have the square root of 3 to multiply the square root of 3, this is the same thing as saying 3 raised to power 1 over 2 times 3 raised to power 1 over 2, and this will give us 3. This is to tell you that if you have a number, say a, that raised to power of 1 over n, your result is going to be the nth root of a. Let this one be the seventh law. So, if this is the seventh law, let us now see a case whereby this law, I want to combine this and this, the seven and eight, I want to combine them. That is, if I have a to negative one over n, you can as well predict what the answer will be. Thank you. It will become one divided by the nth root of a. This will be the eighth law in this class. Now, let us now see the ninth law. If I have a to the power of 1 over n or to the power of m, this is the same thing as saying a to the power of m over n which you can write as the nth root of a or raised to power m. This should make the ninth law in this class. Now, the last but not the least, the tenth law. I will also like to combine the eighth law and the ninth law to produce the tenth law. That is, if I have a to the power of negative m over n, my result will become 1 all over the square root of nth root of a or raised to the power of m. This is the last law that we are going to discuss in this class regarding indices. Kindly master all these laws in order to become better at it. By his grace, in our next video, we shall upload questions on indicial expression and we shall be looking at a special theorem to make life easy for YX students and JAM students during their whole BJ test and that is called zero input. Kindly share this video within your friend, you yourself kindly subscribe to this channel and click on the notification button so that when we upload video you will be notified. Thank you.